Edinburgh. This was the place of public execution. It was in the center of the old commercial area of the city. And here, the Covenanters were martyred. 103 died at this spot. And what wonderful memories are retained of these men and women who died here. We think, for example, of Donald Cargill. He was an older man, an aged minister, but a man who, when he was mounting the scaffold to face death for Jesus Christ, declared that I mount this ladder with less fear and less perturbation than I ever mounted a pulpit to preach. And as he reached the scaffold, he could cry triumphantly, now I am near to gaining that crown. Or we think of James Rennick. He has the honor of being the last martyr to die here at this spot in the grass market. And on the 18th February, 1688, this young man laid down his life for Jesus Christ. As he mounted the scaffold, he looked out on the great company that were assembled around the grass market. And he said, Lord, I die in the faith that thou wilt not leave Scotland, but that thou wilt make the blood of the martyrs the seed of thy church. He encouraged his hearers to stand firm for the truths for which he was dying. And having bad farewell to them all, he said, now I am ready. James Rennick died a comparatively young man, but he died as a faithful Christian, a faithful minister, and a faithful martyr for Jesus Christ. Today we are in the Magdalen Chapel in the Cowgate of Edinburgh. This is one of the few remaining pre-Reformation churches in Edinburgh, and it played a very important part in the story of the Covenanters. After the Covenanters were hanged in the grass market, just 200 yards from where we are situated at the present moment, their mutilated bodies were brought here to the Magdalen Chapel. A group of women from outside the city regarded it as part of their Christian duty to see that these men and women who were hanged were prepared for burial, and their bodies were brought here to be dressed for burial. This is part of the old mortuary table that was used for that purpose. Yet there is a strange irony in the story of the Covenanters in the places associated with them. For example, Parliament Hall was the place where the Covenanters drew up the National Covenant. Yet it was there that the Covenanters were tried. Greyfriars was the place where the Covenanters swore the National Covenant and pledged their loyalty to the terms of that covenant. Yet it was in the confines of Greyfriars that the Covenanters were buried as traitors to the crown. And here in the Magdalen Chapel, where the first General Assembly of the Reformed Church in Scotland took place under the leadership of John Knox, it was here that their bodies were brought to be prepared for burial. But this little building here is a building that stands as a fitting memorial to those men and women who died for Christ's crown and covenant. Today we have brought into the Magdalen Chapel one who has made a life study of the story of the Covenanters. The Reverend George Hossack has retired from the active Baptist ministry, but still travels around telling the story which he loves so much. 
His writings were the first inspiration in my own life to study and research the story of the Covenanters. Welcome, George, to the Magdalen Chapel today. We trust that as you share with us some of your insights and understanding of the story of the Covenanters, others will be helped to understand that story. First of all, George, what is your reaction when you hear the Covenanters referred to as a group of rowdy rebels and narrow bigots intent on imposing their views on all and sundry? Well, that, of course, is how the detractors of the Covenanters would like us to think of them. But rebels and bigots, they certainly were not. There are, of course, extremist elements in every movement, such as the Covenanters. Today, still, we read of bombings and, and rioting. But the leadership of the Covenanter, was, Covenanter movement was stable and strong. The leader himself, the outstanding leader, was Alexander Henderson, who helped to draw up the terms of the historic Covenanter covenant in Greyfriars. And he was a man at once a quiet, reserved, a scholar, a theologian, a gentleman who was most at home in his library among his books. And uh, bigotry was something that one would never associate with such a man, nor would he have given countenance to such a policy. As to being rebels, one has only to read the terms of the covenant itself to see how this is answered. One of the terms of the covenant, part of the terms of the covenant, drawn up in Greyfriars in 1638, where they have expressed their determination to stand for the true reformed religion, as they call it, they go on to say, we promise and swear that to the uttermost of our power and with our means and our lives to defend our sovereign. So we cannot think of such men as being bigots at all, nor rebels. Rather, they were patriots and patriots in the best sense. They want the best for Scotland. They wanted God's best for Scotland. Given then, George, their fierce patriotic motives, was this the only motivation in the struggle of the Covenanters, or was there something deeper in their religious beliefs? Yes, patriots they were, of course, but they were a great deal more because a century earlier, Scotland had known the dynamic of the Reformation. That transformed the religious life of Scotland, as you know. It put the open Bible in the hands of the people, and it gave them a great new sense of worship and liberty uh, in, in, in their worship, in their religion. They had been set free from the dictatorship of any merely human authority, and the Covenanters were determined to preserve that liberty. No longer would any pope or any bishop or any king, for that matter, be allowed to invade the prerogatives of the, prerogatives of the church, which they saw as the territory of the Lord Jesus Christ as king and lord of the church. You've very clearly stated, George, that they were patriots, that they had strong religious convictions. But how did these convictions emerge and were given expression in their personal lives and personal faith? Well, their patriotism and total commitment to the cause, Covenanter principles, found expression, of course, in the whole drama, the torturings, the martyrdoms of the Covenanter story. But as to the spiritual dynamic which sustained them in the midst of all this and led them to their final victory, this shines through the story quite evidently. And to use a good Scots phrase, one would say they were thrilled to Christ. Their hearts and lives were devoted to him, and they were determined that he alone must be Lord and King in the church. Today, the story of the Covenanters is one that is despised in many circles. The story of the persecution and the sufferings are questioned by many people. Indeed, there are those who would say that the story is simply the story of old unhappy things and battles long ago. 
Is there any enduring relevance to the story of the Covenanters? And what do these men and women of the 17th century say to the 20th century?